crisis in the past we had y2k crisis we had the financial crisis uh, we had sars uh, but essentially all these certain part of the world has stopped but this is the first time this is unprecedented where we have seen that the entire world has stopped so that's the fallout of this is the borders have closed people are not traveling uh, international trade has been minimized because now goods cannot travel so much because of uh, contact uh, people don't want any contact so essentially what it means is we are trying to build something on our own of course we have been doing it but essentially what is happening is we have the call was for a vocal for local so moving on again uh, the views expressed are personal uh, not necessarily that of delight again this is the standard disclaimer which we use um, not just because uh, what have typically what happens is uh, when i speak at a public forum uh, essentially i do not represent deloitte but just because i belong to deloitte uh, i should not be misquoted on that so moving on i have a very very structured presentation i will introduce the topic why are we talking about a vocal for local why are we talking about sustainability why we are talking about an india strategy of course india strategy was very much there but now because of covid this has actually increased it has been accelerated next we are looking at how the world views india as a destination and then i look at a goods and service tax scenario because this is very critical because a lot of things have changed because of the introduction of gst and that has an implication on how we do business today and then we look at when we are talking about a vocal for local there are certain parameters which we need to work upon so that's very important that we will look at what are the loopholes what are the problems and then we go ahead and finally i talk about supply chain 2025 i talk about trends now why are we are talking about 2025 now if you look at it our prime minister uh, made a call that by 2025 we will be, become a 5 trillion economy and in order to achieve that there are certain aspects which we need to look at so essentially what we have to do is it's a more futuristic kind of thing because if you look at it today we are suffering from our road infrastructure or railway infrastructure because we have planned something for today not for the future if i have to compare if i look at us their road systems are the best in the world because when they designed their road system they thought through 20 years in advance essentially that's what we are trying to say is when you look at things look at a futuristic point of view i don't expect that you will know everything but you have the data points those data points you can extrapolate and think of a solution which is sustainable not that we build it today and tomorrow if the population of or if something goes wrong everything goes for a dog in fact covid again has reminded us that we were never prepared of course no amount of preparation could have really gone as past covid but companies which have a better prepared which had done a better what if analysis they were actually able to perform better now moving on let me go ahead and introduce the topic now why was a vocal for local now this again as i said the make in india actually campaign had come few years ago essentially if you look at it any balanced economy it has to be a mix of your agriculture it has to be a mix of manufacturing and services what has happened is india initially started as an agri economy where we had 80 90 percent uh, as agriculture then again after independence we started building uh, our institutions of national uh, importance so industry got a precedence so we started getting into industry we started manufacturing and then slowly after globalization the it industry if you look at it is the major chunk of the services it actually grew up but today what has happened is we are doing more service of course we are doing agriculture but the share of manufacturing has come down now if you compare it with china and korea they are much balanced economy because their manufacturing piece is close to 31% and 35% so this is again covid again has given us an opportunity to bring it up to certain level so that as an economy we are balanced because typically what happens if if we don't manufacture if we are just a trading organization we are dependent on somebody and tomorrow if suppose say china closes its borders we don't know we don't have materials to trade because we are not manufacturing so that's very very important 
and if you look at it in terms of ease of doing business we are 130 of course we have improved now what happens is typically in the 90s or 2000 if you had to open a company you had to really uh, go to multiple offices but if you look at it now it's very easy to register a company there are nine steps and everything can be done online so if you look at it let's we talk about india again india is big the advantage is we have a 74% literacy rate so in today's date it has a very very educated workforce in terms of population it's 1.3 billion second most population uh, populous country advantage is we have the second largest english speaking country i'm not saying english is a uh, uh, what do you say a recipe for success but what i'm trying to say is if you know english it's an advantage because when you deal with global uh, globally there has to be common language so for example i'm dealing with people in china and if there is a medium i don't know chinese they don't understand hindi but if i have a common uh, thing to do it is important and the best part is we have the youngest population which is in the workforce uh, sorry uh, sandeep sir hello sorry yeah. to interrupt you sir if you can uh, resume your presentation It is. Uh, are you okay, not able to see or? Uh, well, one of the participants uh, started to share their screen, and because of their okay. that, uh, your presentation Most, has no problem. We are able to see. Ma'am, uh, yes, you are able to see, but uh, we are uh, doing a recording of this event. So, uh, until unless uh, uh, sir's screen is shared uh, in a proper manner, okay, we will not be able to record the session. So, uh, thank you, sir, and sorry for interrupting. No problem. No problem. That's fine. It happens with all of us. So where we were saying is we have the youngest population which is in the workforce. So that's an advantage for us in terms of unemployment. Again, this is slightly old data. It's uh, because of COVID there are certain we have suffered. But as I say, COVID is temporary. I know uh, this has actually uh, the world has come to a standstill. But this is also going to go away. In terms of GDP share, which I'm talking about is. services is 61 industry is 23 so essentially the industry make in india or local for vocal has to go up and of course we have a mobile internet penetration now what happened is most companies were looking at a digitization thing but because of covid when you are talking about a non contact kind of a thing we will see this is accelerated but as i said there are certain industry where you cannot work from home you still will need contact but the advantage is we will see some automation there we will see some robots there but having said that robots are not going to take away our jobs robots will do the routine jobs while the nature of our jobs will move more towards an intelligence for example a very classic example which i give is a air airline pilot he has all the dashboards like what is the fuel what is the speed everything but when he has to do a crash landing it is the human brain which has to make the decision a machine cannot make the decision machine can always run on a past data it can run an algorithm it can say that this is what it should be but the decision finally has to be done by the human being so there will be nature of the shift of jobs so moving on let's look at from a india point of view now india offers a very very sir, unique can, scenario for example sir if you can yeah. just uh, once again re uh, resume the presentation okay sure thank you sir do that so are you able to see now yes sir please continue thank you yeah okay so essentially how is india different for example we have a 75 70% rural population there is a varied buying power for example people in cities visa we people in villages uh, there is a divide so that actually poses a lot of challenges for our country then of course we have a widely distributed rural area where uh, essentially what happens is uh, internet penetration is has is better definitely better but it has not really percolated down to the lowest villages in terms of transportation our logistics costs are very high it's 14% worldwide it's 8% because we have a problem with our infrastructure transportation cost again is a 40% which is very very high we are spending way too much money on transportation again trucks our 70% trucks is actually 
not a very uh, economic way of uh, handling things because trucks are uh, not cheaper and in fact if you look at it we have smaller trucks which ply so essentially you don't get the economies of scale the lead time is very high then of course there are third party companies we have too many middlemen so i'm just presenting what are the bottlenecks what are the problems which we have and this actually will help us look at how we can actually be more sustainable we can look at things in a different way in terms of inventory and warehousing again our inventory carrying cost is 24% because we have not really have built sophisticated warehouses if i talk about warehouses people think about go down but understand that a, a warehouse should be able to accommodate multiple commodities a warehouse should have uh, not multiple loading and unloading because that's a wastage we have smaller warehouses so in, is inefficient but thanks to global uh, gst what happened is now we have bigger warehouses because typically what happens is if i had to uh, do business in 29 states i had to have 29 warehouses because i had tax benefits now with gst all this is gone so essentially what is happening is we will see bigger warehouses and we will see larger warehouses and of course we will look at uh, more uh, more efficient forecasting so people are actually thinking at an efficient supply chain if you look at uh, our prime minister some time ago back made a statement that supply chain will be critical now supply chain nobody really spoke about it but coming from the prime from the head of a country that this will shows that how, how critical it is for india to be sustainable in the coming years Now, if I look at it, how it has changed. Now, this is actually analysis which we had done. Essentially, uh, what happened is what I was talk talking about. Build something for the future. So, if you look at it, this is again the uh, the purple dots are where the cities are, uh, uh, the industrial clusters are, and the, the triangles are the large urban cities. So, if you look at it, our industrial clusters were mainly spread around cities. But that's why what happened is we nearly never developed. Our tier two, tier three cities. Now, if I look at futuristically, this is how it is going to look. So now, this is very important because if you have to build our infrastructure, if you have to build our railways, if you have to build our roadways, we have to keep this in mind because it should not create a bottleneck on us. That's where past and present data becomes very, very important because it's very easy to analyze data and look at uh, how trends are going in the future. now again in terms of trade as i said warehouse is very unorganized for example we have smaller players we have people who own two three uh, trucks what happens is they don't most of them are daily wage earners so essentially what the pandemic told us because the entire trucking industry stopped people did not have any income people were not able to eat so it's very it's high time that we move into organized so at least people have the benefits of say a uh, retirement benefits or a provident fund of account so that they can still sustain so this is a wake up call that we need to bring for example the film industry we moved into organized organized industry so it's high time that we again move our warehousing into organized industry of course Uh, we will have better warehouses because now we are talking about efficiency now we have a industry which is cold chain you have spoke about because what happens is we have enough food in the country to feed everybody but the problem is some of our, our people don't get to eat because food is lost during food is wasted during transit so that's why cold chain will be critical and again if you look at it Uh, we had uh, cases of where we had fake dr drugs we had fake material so now tracking and tracing will be critical so all this is actually leading to a call for local for vocal and in order for the to support the manufacturing industry our supply chain also needs to be very very robust now moving on if i just this is a matrix which we had done is typically if it is fmcg we do it by road if it is a capital goods we are using a coastal inland water and if it is a bulk goods we are doing rail the problem is nobody has done an analysis to find out whether it is the most efficient way of do doing business for example suppose i want to ship materials from say cochin to ahmedabad the first thing which comes to me is roadways expensive 
Railways. Railways is the problem because now again, you know, railways are not flying right now. But we have a huge coastal line and the costs are very, very less. Essentially, this is where we have to challenge the assumptions. We have to challenge the things what we have been doing in the past because there are always possibilities. There are always newer ways of doing this. In fact, uh, I was there's a very imp a very interesting industry, or not an industry, a ministry in, in Qatar. They have a ministry called Ministry of Possibility. So if you go and say this is not possible, so the ministry is willing to give you a hearing and understand why it is not possible. So essentially, this is where we need to look at possibility. Because these are difficult times. People are frustrated. People are losing hopes. It's very important that we stay positive and we look at Everything, whatever is possible, because this is also again going to go away. Moving on, this is again an analysis which we have done, how we are look at the country. Now, this is again a sketch we have done for the future. Now, if you look at it, why we have talked about it? If you look at railways, today, the goods train and the passenger train all travel through the same track. Very, very inefficient and passenger gets a priority. That's why goods train, if you have seen it, if you have traveled, you know that the goods train are always stopped to make way for passenger trains. But if we had built a dedicated railways for the freight movement, we would have been faster. So now we are catching up, we are trying to build a dedicated freight corridor, but understand that there are certain policy decisions which we have not done, but it's very right time, of course, it's not very late. We can look at upgrading, we can look at totally revamping our entire infrastructure. Now, again, this is, a snapshot which I want to talk about. Now, let's talk about airways. Now, people perceive that air freight is expensive. It is not. For example, when I was studying, I could not have afforded an air ticket, but it's very expensive. But then Air Deccan came in, they changed the entire business model. Now, most of us can actually afford an, an air ticket. Similarly, if you look at it, air freight is not expensive. Only thing, it's a mindset change which is important. We have not built enough capabilities to, because if you look at it again, in terms of air, the passenger gets a priority. We don't have dedicated cargo handling. We don't have sufficient waiting time at the areas for the trucks. So this is an area which we should explore because air is faster and it can be known non-contact in this COVID times. Moving on in terms of port, again, this is very interesting. Um, what I understand is India has about 230 ports, but roughly only 18 and 20 are operational. So what is happening is even a smaller country like Sri Lanka, they handle more containers per hour. So we are hugely inefficient. And this is again an area where we need to look at. So essentially what is happening is, this is again, the government is investing money and time in building this because this is very critical because waterways is cheap. In fact, uh, some time back we were having a conversation with the government of Sri Lanka. So what they are doing is they are trying to invest $500 billion in upgrading their ports and that's all Chinese money. So what we told them is you can actually employ drones there. Again, it's a possibility because the way the cost of drones have come down the kind of money they're willing to spend in upgrading their ports, they can actually employ uh, drones to actually do, do the sh uh, shipment. So that will be cheaper for them. So again, this what I say is, uh, due, due to this COVID, drones have been used for surveillance. In fact, uh, there are some schools in Mumbai and Hyderabad which have got licenses as for training of drones. So this is, uh, don't have the perception that drones are expensive, they wear. But the cost of technology has come down drastically that this is going to be affordable in the near future and we will have indigenous make in India local for vocal drones. So in terms of railways, I touched briefly upon it. Essentially, what we are saying is we are building a dedicated freight carrier. So essentially, this is where how we are trying to be self-sufficient. Uh, we are having a dedicated freight carrier. So freight will be faster. It will be definitely cheaper. Now, in terms of road, I said we have a problem. First of all, the trucks we are doing again, infrastructure is not good. For example, the trucks travel very well in the highways, but when it comes to cities, because of the narrow roads, we are forced to take smaller trucks, which is inefficient. So there is a possibility of a drone uh, kind of a thing. 
for a last mile delivery so essentially if you look at it everybody is struggling with last mile last mile is nothing but the warehouse to the customer so who has the answer to this puzzle yeah excuse me sir uh, sorry to interrupt yeah. you there is a request to again resume the yeah. presentation again to resume sure. the presentation please sorry for the interruption uh, we have no, people no. who have got sure. their cameras on so there is an interruption so could you please resume the presentation again thank you just uh, let me know once you see it so are you able to see it yes sir yeah so essentially i was talking about trucking industry is very inefficient lot of unorganized player lot of smaller players there is a trade union and in fact we were struggling with the uber kind of model because people don't want to participate but this is an area understand that uh, if you are collaborating with your fellow you are going to win in fact some time back if you look at it unilever and png they went into a uh, price war and both of them were losing but what happened is they decided that we will not get into a price war in fact what it's important that the trucking industry come together because this will be a win win for all of us now if you look at in terms of warehousing this is again an area we have been i was talking about the problem was the problem in india is is the land the the way we work is if i have to buy land i have to buy land from the government so i have a land where five people own that land so typically what happens is people buy the government buys this land from the people and the government will sell it to you so that takes a lot of time and in fact uh, the banks are because of our huge non performing assets and a lot of uh, what do you happen a uh, thing on bad debts it's difficult to have access to capital so what happens is after gst we will have definitely bigger where we are in fact gst has been rolled out so we will have bigger warehouses because now we don't get those tax benefits and in fact e-commerce has brought in organized retail thanks to amazon flipkart because of e-commerce things have really looking very very bright in fact if you look at it india has one of the largest uh, startups in fact china and us still they own 78% of the startups but india is still we see more startups today because today we we have technology e-commerce has enabled you just need an internet connection and you just need to have a marketplace just to sell your products so we will we are going to see that means we will have more emphasis on warehousing we are already seeing it and uh, with post covid uh, what happens is we will have more non contact kind of a kind of a thing so we will see a lot of investment in terms of warehousing now this is where i was talking about in india 60% is still roadways which is highly inefficient this is just a comparison with china which is just 30% and if you look at it they are doing a huge jump by waterways in fact china is doing 46% Uh, sir, if you can uh, please unmute your mic. Uh, your mic has been muted by someone. So is it yeah. better? Yes, sir. Sir, please go so ahead. Essentially, this is what was happening. Is India still has a larger share in water in uh, roadways, which is highly inefficient. In fact, as I was talking about, China does forty-six percent by water. so of course we have a problem with our inland waterways because our rivers what happens is there's too much of silt but this is an area where we can look at in fact we have a huge coastal line which we can actually leverage the problem is nobody really thought about it nobody really made that uh, really ever explored that that's just a possibility so moving on i was talking about where if you look at it most of our costs are last mile from the warehouse to the customer because typically a small packet i have to take in a, a tempo trailer or something like it inefficient so this is an area people are trying to solve this people are looking at robots people are looking at drones so this is an area in fact the cost we will have in fact uh, as i was reading uh, some time back that lot of investment is, is happening in terms of drone because this is an area in fact for sizeization for surveillance drones are very very effective so this is an area where we can look at Uh, for our logistics uh, cost to be more e efficient 
now let's look at how the world sees market uh, india as an emerging market in fact what do you, what has happened is we were talking about a logistics performance index of course we were 54 we moved to 35 but again we have slipped to 38 so there are six parameters on what we do is because unless we really address this we cannot be self sufficient when we are talking about a sustainability if you are talking about a system where india is self sufficient our logistics has to support it because if you look at it logistics cost is typically 60 to 70% so unless we are efficient there the vocal for local is not going to pick up because it's very easy to lay a factory it's very easy to build a product but if i cannot distribute that product efficiently i will not be profitable but this is again i'm emphasizes again and again this is where as a nation we really need to work very very closely now i will just look about a gst scenario in fact uh, when gst was rolled out uh, sir sorry your mic is again muted sir tiwari sir if you can uh, remove one of the participant ashish kumar from this meeting please So is it better? Can you see my screen also? Yes, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. These are the kind of savings which we are looking at. In fact, there's a food and beverage client. They were able to save about nine percent. So what I wanted to say is, GST is actually reaping benefits. We moved into an area where it's a one nation, one tax, and we are slowly starting seeing the benefits of this because. now we don't need to build 29 warehouses in 29 states because we are having super efficient warehousing and if india has to be self sufficient if india we are talking about a local for vocal this is the kind of in fact if, if you look at it the number of warehouses is also going to come down it will be bigger warehouses efficient warehouses now let's look at this is critical from a india point of view now this was a survey which was done against how we fare against other countries in terms of product quality if you look at it japan germany are way way ahead so if we are talking about a local for vocal this is an area which we have to address because the problem is we hamara we still have an attitude that theek hai chalta hai but when we are really talking about a global economy when we are talking about competing with companies like germany japan our product quality has to improve second in terms of product design this is again an area which we have to what we have hap happened is a lot of startups have failed in india why because we have just borrowed ideas from the west and implemented for example a very classic example see i started my career with tata motors so what happened is initially we had a joint venture with tata cummins and cummins and what happens our trucks were fitted with cummins engines so what essentially happened is Six months down the line, we found out that the drivers were refusing to drive the trucks. So when we went back, we did a root cause analysis. We figured out that if you look at a typical American engine, the exhaust pipe goes below the feet of the driver. So for a cold country like US, it works fine. But for a hot country like India, if the exhaust pipe goes below the feet of the driver it's not good so we had to go back to the drawing board and redesign the engine so essentially that's very important when we are looking at india the context becomes important it's good to borrow ideas but look at it it's important for example let's give a typical example of byju's in fact if you look at it uh, as a economy as a society uh, we don't believe in paying for stuff on the internet because we are uh, again it's nothing against anybody but the way we grew up we thought that whatever is available on the internet is free so that's why our classrooms were we had more classrooms but byju's a lot of startups failed because they tried to do an online only but byju's was a classic example where they tried to do a mix of online and offline which worked because in india we still believe that class of course classroom has its own merits because the covid has shown us uh, the, the the children are really having a tough time because for example uh, 
what happened is they are being subjected to these online classes which is equally frustrating for them and there's a divide because not everybody in the country can afford a smartphone and if you don't have a smartphone you really are missing out on the online classes of course uh, we are thinking of how we can reopen our schools maybe something kind of a sh uh, shift kind of a thing where fewer students are there in the class they don't have lunch together because schools are important but why i'm talking about is product design again the way we design things becomes we are really lagging behind in terms of on time delivery as i said we are again not efficient because uh, what happens is we don't have a problem of labor in the country so that's why we have really never really tried to of course everything cannot be automated but this is an area where we can actually look at in terms of after sale service again we are bad because we believe that once we have sold the product our responsibility ends there but understand that a customer journey starts from right from the first time he interacts with the company he will speak to the customer service he gets a view of your manufacturing he buys the product he also look because today what happens is everybody we have more it's not it's a buyers market it's not a sellers market in fact the classic example if i give is in the 1980s when i had to buy a scooter i think bajaj was the only company which was there so there was an 18 month waiting period and people were willing to wait but today if you look at it if i don't get it i will go to somebody else the customer is not no more tolerant the customer tolerance time has reduced drastically and the thing is if i i don't do it somebody else will because if i don't get in amazon i will go to card if i don't go to card i will go to somebody else so today the customer has choices so that's why it's very important that as a nation we look at our one time delivery as well and after sale service again because, because that is where you are engaging with the when we talking about a customer experience after sale service becomes very very important in terms of managing distribution of course we have done better because we have a huge uh, uh, if you look at fmcg unilever procter and gamble uh, they have really spread it through the nf agents we have done well but still there is a lot of improvement because if we compare with us and japan there is a lot which we can do so again this is not to say that we have we are not done well we have done well but there is a lot of improvement which actually if we have to talk about a nation which is self sufficient a sustainable nation a nation which is high on local for vocal we have to really look at it now i was talking about the startup now if i look at a typical startup most of them are on e-commerce or consumer services or an aggregator the aggregator is you actually connect the buyers and sellers together uber uber doesn't own a car what happens is they have a consumers like us who want a car now and there are people who want to sell that services but if you look at it i wanted to touch upon it that we have not seen too many startups in uh, manufacturing we have not seen too many startups in agriculture because that is where there is a gap and in fact look at it there are companies like ninja card and all that who are doing great work in bringing the agriculture economy in fact i have friends who are on five days of the week they are software engineers but on two days they do farming in fact there are people who are actually doing a lot and in fact that is an area where because the kind of food which we waste in the country it's a time to seriously think and this is very very profitable again in terms of manufacturing we are a country which is not uh, which is risk averse we don't want to in fact if you look at our it's we don't have a good product we are more doing services because we have efficient labor we have cheap labor we are serving the entire world but if you look at it we really don't have a product in id so this is high time we look at building a product ourselves because most of the erp if you look at it sap came from germany oracle came from us in fact in india we had ramco as a soft first erp but unfortunately it nearly never really picked up but this is a time where as a startup today we have a country where people are willing to take risk because if you look at the current population it's a smarter population if you look at charles darwin's theory it's an evolved race definitely the newer generation is smarter than us better than us they can take risks 
they are a generation which wants instant gratification and if you if you look at it most of them want to start early fail early and then get going so most of the ceos today are 28 29 and earlier days a ceo had to be 50 52 so if you look at it we have a younger population people are willing to if, in fact if you are young you can take more risk again this is a food for thought that these are some of the areas as a startup which we can look at because if you build our country this is an area which we should be looking at now let's look at a supply chain 20, 2025 now why i am talking about 2025 because we have an ambitious target of getting into 5 trillion economy in 2025 and for that we have to understand what is in fact this is from the from a report by at kerney we will have more mega cities in fact we have tier 1 cities but because we have not developed our tier 2 tier 3 cities we are lacking there so essentially what will happen is we will have more mega cities that means Uh, sir, if you can uh, please unmute your mic one again, one time, one more. Yeah, is it better now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So what I was talking about, we will have more segments. So what do I mean by segments? Segments is I typically divide the population into multiple strata. For example, for automobiles. i have a b c d e so a b is very a is very high luxury cars uh, fewer people can afford that but the way it is moving is every customer is important every customer wants a customized product so we will still have to build products so that we differentiate it closer to the customer Now, a classic example i give is asian paints asian paints if you look at it in the 1990s if you go and ask for any color if they don't have it they will say sir we don't have it we will have to make it for you and give it to you that means you still waste 3 months 6 months but today if you go to any asian paints retail outlet you ask for any color they will mix and give it to you so they have standardized the product to certain extent that they are doing the differentiation closer for the, for the customer it's still a brilliant experience for but for the company it's still a standard product they are just mixing it so what i am trying to say is because every customer will be important we will have more segments we will have to differentiate our products closer to the customer we will build standard product but at the customer point we differentiate because otherwise i cannot be efficient in terms of third of course we have done uh, much better in terms in fact if you look at the golden quadrangle it's a very ambitious project to build our roadways so definitely this has improved but a lot has to be still happen we have to invest our infrastructure in fact government is spending a lot of money around that and in fact this is again still going to go next is we will have regulation regulation means that i don't have any control for example government one day announced we will have only electric vehicles by 2030 so what happened is by uh, to the overnight my food pump my carburetor those industries became defunct over it what happened is people vanished industries vanished so it's important that as a industry i should be able to lobby with the government but i need to watch for the trends i need to diversify tomorrow what if this business stops tomorrow suppose we decide that we will only have solar power we need to have a way to look at what will we do with the thermal power and the hydro power so this is again what i am trying to say is we don't have much control on that but it's very important to go up uh, could you Unmute your speaker, please.
still continue this is just a temporary trend in fact the us china trade war again it's temporary india china trade war is temporary because if you look at it uh, i think i was listening to one of uh, the interviews by uh, uh, the md of uh, bharat forge he was saying that you cannot really think of a supply global supply chain without china so we may hate the country but understand that a lot of things have actually in fact our pharmaceuticals the apis they come a lot from china in fact our solar cells they come from china so immediately things will not happen but it's high time we look at looking at our how where we can place our factories so that's becomes important and the final is we will have more affordable and accessible technology in fact if you look at it when i bought my first cell phone way back in 2004 it was very expensive but today a smartphone is available in the 2000 uh, 2500 Uh, range so that's very very important uh, for one minute for us to look and don't ignore technology because artificial intelligence robotics cloud computing virtual reality this will be critical because they will support your business and covid what it has done is it has accelerated our uh, digitization process so technologies will be affordable of course they are affordable but the problem is small and medium enterprises it still they cannot really afford it so we have to make technology more affordable because we don't because any technology usually uh, creates a digital divide we don't want the world because if we have a divide among the world there will be social unrest things are already happening people who don't have it feel they are neglected so if we have to avoid a social unrest we have to more democratize technology that's important now in terms of i just wanted to uh, i have exactly 3 minutes because it's a 45 minute thing because i will leave 10 minutes for the presentation so this is my second last slide so essentially the way supply chain has changed is earlier nobody spoke about supply chain people thought that supply chain is purchasing supply chain is logistics but it is not supply chain is whatever it takes to serve a customer a product or a service for example it is purchasing it is manufacturing it is logistics it is sales it is after sale service it is product retail so sir please unmute yourself sir you have been muted sir Please unmute yourself. Now is it better? Yes, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. So what I was talking about is now we have a function where supply chain has a direct representation in the in the board. So that's why it's important that we look at any business from an end to end, right from my procurement, my manufacturing, my logistics, my sales, my after sales service, my product return. That's important. Now in terms of financials risk earlier. the finance department handled the supply chain finance but today supply chain themselves manage their own finance so that's where important is you also have a working understanding of your finance and understand that today our customers have access to internet they are more knowledgeable so essentially don't just look at internet and give because that is where our creativity our thinking power will be important so that's where we will look at that everybody now has access to information Uh, again this is as um, right from the uh, from the stock market is if the supply chain is a problem our stock prices will go down in fact when toyota announced that there is a product recall toyota prices go so what i wanted to say is any disruption in supply chain is actually hampering your productivity so finally i just wanted to say is any supply chain planning if as an in india if we have to look at a sustainability if you have to look at local for vocal we need to look at certain aspects for example we need to look at a strategic planning which is a one or two year what i want to do as a supply chain as a company what are my objectives say i want to be the world's fifth best manufacturer i want to be the second best company in supply chain next is a tactical planning is how many factories how many warehouses how many people next we'll come to operational planning is when do i produce when do i decide to store how do i control it and finally of course we are moving to a daily of course you have to monitor daily
so what i wanted to say is it's a very thought out process and if we have to achieve whatever we want to if we are talking about a local for vocal we need to look at all the four aspects because we need to have a long term view we need to have a medium term view we need to have a short term view otherwise we will never be able to achieve what we wanted so this is what i had so uh, thank you for being a very patient audience so uh, now i am uh, open to questions sir uh, now this is the question session if anybody has any question please either you can unmute and then speak or you can send messages in the chat box so again as i said you can feel free to ask any questions but nothing is a stupid question because it's fine and there's nothing wrong in not knowing sir uh, i am uh, professor anita uh, i have a question sir yes sir uh, yes sir starting of the session you yeah. have uh, you spoke about make in india and uh, you spoke about the apply chain uh, can i know uh, how uh, make in india concept can help the supply chain to be much better in india when compared to usa so how the initiatives taken by uh, modi our prime minister can help us to make our supply chain management more effective okay so it's a very good question what happens is suppose i am manufacturing in us and i am distributing in india so there's a huge lead time see outsourcing if you look at it it looks very easy but understand that you have to coordinate you have to control you have to monitor so lot of our time money and energy is going in monitoring whether my product was shipped from us where has it reached if it is into a china port now china has stopped all shipment so if your goods are lying in china port i don't know where you will get so there's a lot of uncertainty but what will happen is if i manufacture in india itself my lead time goes really shrinks so for a customer he gets it faster and from a supply chain point of view it removes the uncertainty it removes my coordination effort it removes my control effort so that is very very important because earlier people thought that outsourcing will lead to cheaper cost but understand that outsourcing is not cheap you have to spend money in trolling in coordinating in what that's why there's a reverse trend which is happening is for somebody in us they are trying to manufacture in mexico because they are closer they don't have too many answer for example suppose something happens in thailand my shipment don't arrive where do i go so if i have make in india if i am already producing in my country and similarly what happens is distributing it's easy for me second thing is necessity actually is the mother of invention for example if you look at it how did we develop the super computer we asked for us for the technology us refused to give us but then our scientists our computer professionals we built it we had the first super computer we were able to build it so look at it from an india point of view we were able to achieve similar the those target similarly we had to really depend on us to take our satellites to space what happened is it was hugely expensive but when the more we started building the rockets in india we were self sufficient and that's why our cost came down we were super efficient we generated more employment we don't have a brain drain now we have a reverse brain because india offers more opportunity a lot of cutting edge work is now happening in fact uh, i was talking to somebody in iid delhi they have actually built a smart manufacturing facility and that is actually going to help the government has invested a lot of in iids and iims and they are actually going to in fact there are institutes of national importance a lot of it's just not the iids or iims there are a lot of other institutes which have actually gone into the same league who are doing cutting edge so if we do this first of all we will be the global hub where we will supply to the world we will get more employability we don't have to depend on anybody because today as i said pharmaceutical we are still depending on china for apis similarly for solar we are still dependent on china for solar cells but if we start building it 
we will be cheaper because india if you look at it we have an amazing talent which we can reduce the cost in fact the jugad is people really make fun out of us but understand that because of this jugad we have been able to do things which nobody in the world because if you look at it we don't have so much money as a nation to invest but we but we have an amazing country where within this limited resources we have been able to do great so if we really focus in make in india we will be closer to the customer we will supply to the world so that's a huge huge plus for the country thank you sir it was an excellent presentation really 